I'm going to speak about something very fundamental, and that is what I have in common with um, my, the person who spoke in front of me. Although it may have made you sleep not so well in the next couple of nights, because you have to think about those poor animals, um, I'm still going to talk, uh, talk about sleep now. And it's a dangerous time to talk about sleep, because you're surely sleepy already. And I thought, should I do this completely without slides or not? And then I decided I'm going to confront you with a couple of facts that you may not know. And therefore, we will, at some stage, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a story first, because these, um, these gentlemen will take some more time. And the story is about washing machines. Um, do you believe that the manufacturers of washing machines over the last 50 years, also under the comp competition of different brands, have come up with a washing machine that uses as little electricity as possible and still makes a good product at the end? Now, they, they've developed programs that these, wash, that these clothes have to go through, and in the end, they should be as clean as possible. Does anybody believe that is true? Hands up? OK. Now, how many of you would go into the basement or wherever your washing machine stands, and after about 20 minutes, you would press the off button and would say, that's enough. The washing should be OK now. Now, you may ask yourself, what does washing machines have to do with the, te with the topic that we're talking about? And what I'm trying to get across to you is that you do that with your sleep every day. Because evolution has optimized something that has to go, th go through a certain program. And then you come and push the button in form of an alarm clock, for example. And you say, this must be enough. What you get in those cases is very wet and dirty washing. Now, I'm talking about sleep because we know very little about sleep, and I'm, I'm trying to find out about sleep across the whole world. We used to gather information about sleep. Now we're starting to me measure millions of people because we're trying to create a world map of sleep. And this is sort of the start. You can see this is a European-centered initiative, and therefore the European countries are very dense, and only the north of America is very slowly catching up. There's one, there's one exception in Europe, and that's France. I don't know how, why you can't get French people to participate in scientific um, endeavors. No, what, no, no, I don't know. See, see, pourquoi pas? In any case, I'm going to show you sleep across ages. What you see here is, is, is very simple. It's sleep duration in hours from um, seven here to eight hours here. And this is your age. Not necessarily your age, but this is age. 10, 20, 30, up to 80. And this is a very boring graph because it shows what we all know. We sleep longer when we're children, and we then sleep shorter and shorter and shorter. And then we come into a less dramatic decline in our sleep. And then we sort of, once we're getting older, we scatter around. But by the way, we don't sleep shorter. Now, this is known. What hasn't been known, because the question weren't never asked, sleep research before we started to never did the trivial question of asking what people sleep on work days and on free days. Um, independently, in independent questions. And that is what you see. A huge discrepancy between what we get in sleep during the work days, that's the sleep duration we get during the work days, and that's the sleep that people get themselves on free days. They're catching up like mad, because they always get too little sleep on work days. And that this, that this is not just a biological phenomenon, is clearly pointed out by the fact that with the average age of 65, the difference between sleep on work days and sleep on free days disappears. 
with large, large numbers, we can get at these very trivial basic things that we hadn't thought about, but which we need to think about. And one thing we also haven't thought about is a map of sleep timing. Now, how do I read this? This is Budapest. This are a couple of points in Spain. This is England, Ireland, Paris. Very few data from France. Holland, Denmark up here, um, and Austria, Switzerland, and so forth. The green dots mean that people sleep early, go to bed early, and wake up early. And the red dots mean they, they go to bed late and wake up late. And you can see that there's a wave across Europe in when people sleep. And that wave is four minutes for each longitude later. And that's exactly the time that the um, sun takes to cross one of the longitudes. Because our sleep depends on the internal clock and the internal clock is set by light and darkness, and we're going to talk about this later on. Now, I give you one last bit of information, and that is sleep timing changes enormously with age, and that, again, is almost a triviality, because what it means is that children are early sleepers, go to bed early, wake up early. Then in puberty and adolescence, we get later and later and later and later. We all know that. Teenagers can go to bed in the morning and sleep all day. And then from a certain age on, in women at the age of 19 and a half, and in men almost 22, they're always a bit late developers, you know, um, you get earlier again until, and, you, and men are later than women throughout most of the adult life until it doesn't matter anymore so much whether they're women or men, and then they become the same again. But as, gr as grandparents, That's a timing. That's the ti that's the sorry. That's the timing of of, your, of the middle of your sleep when you are when you can sleep when you want. So the three o'clock here means that you went to bed at eleven. If you need eight hours, and you wake up at seven by yourself. Um, the six o'clock is you went to bed at two, and you wake up at ten. That's the middle of the sleep. So that just means that the timing of sleep gets later and then earlier again. That's how, why grandparents are um, as early as the children, which in the big old families might have been quite nice because they could have looked after the children while, while the teenage parents could have slept in. There's another, there's another little information in here, and that is why do men marry younger women? And the, the, the answer is because they can have breakfast together which is not to be taken too seriously, but I think it's worth um, a thought whether you are going to choose a man that wakes up with you or whether you're going to do the breakfast. You make the breakfast. So let's go into, into more conversations about circadian sleep, timing, and, and um, light. Now it's working. Now it's working. Tell me, Till, how do we know, how do we find out what is the right amount of sleep for me? How do I do this? I'm sorry, when I'm on stage, I'm the only one allowed to talk. That's the okay, way I'm fine. I'll, I'll try it with gestures. Um, so tell me. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually quite difficult to find out because what sleep research probably has researched was sleep deprivation so far. Because we all um, have too little sleep. The way we sleep is very modern. And the way we think we should sleep is even more modern. Because we think we should sleep in one big chunk from the time we go to bed to the time we wake up. And that big chunk should not be longer than eight hours. Because we're manically trying to get as much out of the 16 hours that are left as possible, and that's why we compress our sleep into eight hours, no matter what time of year and no matter how much we really need. And then we find we are always tired, and the question how much an individual needs is very, very difficult to answer because many people, when they start sleeping the way they can, sleep much too long, 
because they have to catch up so much of the sleep. So, so how many nights would I have to sleep, as you say, much too long without setting an alarm clock to know, okay, after like four nights or seven nights, is this the original sleep? So when do you, I know? If you have no obligations and you wake, you, you fall asleep when you, um, when you want to or when you can, <laughs> that's the difference, um, and you wake up by yourself. I think after about four or five nights after, so the, the, the sixth or fifth night would probably give you um, a good estimate of how much sleep your body needs. And if you now do this for a couple of days, you can even do something which we call averaging, and then you get a more ac accurate number. And let's say I would do this like for, for five or six nights and find out, which I think I would find out in my case, that I need something like eight and a half hours, and I would feel like this is just not possible. I can't afford sleeping eight and a half hours. So people like me tend to set the alarm clock earlier. What happens if I continuously do that? What's the risk in not getting the sleep? Well, th we have invented a term which I think is very, very descriptive. What happens nowadays, because our clocks are getting later and later and later, our internal clocks. And this is due to the fact that we get hardly any light during the day because being inside means we get very little light. If we're lucky, we get about 200 lux. Going outside on the most cloudy and rainy day gives you already 10,000 lux. If you go outside today, you get 150,000 lux. So there's a huge difference which we don't notice. At the, at the same time, we put on lights in the evening. So we give our body clocks always some kind of dim, continuous light, and that makes them later. So late that 80% of us now need an alarm clock to wake up to work. And 80% is practically everybody. Uh, that is because the internal clocks are late. The external clocks still want us to be farmers, to wake up early, because farmers can wake up early because they're outside. And this living in these two time zones we call social jet lag. So social jet lag gives you too little sleep, it makes um, you fatter. It makes you develop um, e more easily diabetes. It makes you more depressed. It makes you drink more coffee or caffeine. Um, it makes you more likely to be a smoker. It makes you drink more alcohol. And these are this is just the tip of the iceberg. So living in this discrepancy between what our bodies want and what the social life wants of our body um, is, is a huge health risk. And also le leads to sleep problems, so that the majority of people cannot sleep anymore, although they could if they slept at the right times. But isn't it as well, like, like I said, a social thing? I would nearly, I, sometimes when I said, oh, I need eight or eight and a half hours, Really? I just need five. And I always tend to feel like, oh my god, yeah, there's so much more like diligent and I, it's nearly a... So is this really a conversation between two women? No, between you and me. But was that the, the fictional? I would never... No, yes, it can't be my between makeup artist only needs five hours of sleep Who? and I thought, okay, this sounds great. She's okay. so right, she's hugely so fat, by the it's way. So interesting Jeanette, I'm sorry. Because it's a very male story. It's, it's a male story? Yes, uh, the inverse of a male story, because your friend says mine is shorter than yours. <laughs> it's a male story? I, it sounds well, more Well, the like men <laughs> always say mine is longer than yours. Right. But, but in your case, you say mine is shorter than yours, and it's the same philosophy. It goes to a certain dimension of length, but quality is not in the equation. So I only need six hours. It's interesting that you bring the sleep this debate is, to a size debate and... It's well, originally she wanted me to talk about sleep and sex, and I said that's a very short talk because they're incompatible. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I thought I'd bring up a bit of... So, so the male says, and, and you say, and that, 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 that you're better because you... But tell me, some people tend to sleep less, like, I know, decision makers, rulers of banks, and so they tend, I know you've proven yes. that scientifically, well, they sleep much less. How is that? Um, People who, who, who lead banks can't do what I do and say, okay, make an, make an appointment with this person after 11 o'clock. They have to make appointments very early and throughout the day. 
So to come into a certain status of what I would call a controller um, uh, is, has a selection for being a short sleeper because sleep length is genetic. Uh, you, you can be born as somebody who can get, get by with six hours or even less of sleep, but if you're born to sleep nine hours, you have to get them, otherwise the quality of your wake time, time will go down the drain very quickly. So there's a selection for leaders to be short sleepers and early, and early sleepers. And um, that's also probably because of why we still have things like daylight savings time, because they have to, the decision makers have to make these decisions, and they have no clue what the rest of the population um, lives like with that who need more sleep, for example. They you said that there's a, a link between creativity and the amount of sleep we get, is that correct? Well, you see, this is the washing program, the, the washing machine uh, picture. Uh, part of, of sleep makes you um, uh, digest what you, what you saw and put it into context. And new information put into context is nothing else but a very innovative process. It is the basis of innovation. And if you now press the button of your washing machine and say, this is enough, and then you don't go through the program of making the basis for being innovative. You still can be a, a very good um, person who, who, who helps other people's innovations to, be, to become um, reality, so you can make decisions. But if you sleep shorter than what you need, if you don't go through the washing program, one of the first things that go is innovation p uh, potential, but also social, social competence. One can show that people who slept too little don't even recognize what the face says. So uh, even for that, you need the sleep you need. It's, it's wrong to say that you need eight hours, but if you need nine hours and you only get seven hours, you already fall into the trap of having all these um, consequences. You said that our inner alarm clock is depending on a light, the amount of light we're getting, right? Did you just say inner alarm clock? I would not have said that. Okay, I, good. I probably meant the inner clock. chrono No, meter? just clock, just clock. Just, just, what? Le le just clock, don't, le don't, clock. don't mention alarm. Ah, no, okay, no alarm, of no, course. No. No, the no, the no internal alarm. clock. The yes. internal clock. Yeah. So the internal clock sets itself from the amount of light we're getting. Yes. There's a great experiment with chicken, right? I heard this chicken where, where uh, they've been taped on their, um, how do you say it, pineal epiphyseal gland? Yeah, what the is this epifuse, gland? they the call epifuse, it in Germany, or pineal gland in, in the, English. Exactly, and they, they shot the light off that by sticking something on their head, on the chicken's head and um, to see what happens when chickens don't get the light anymore. Well, what happens then to them? They forget to go to bed, they forget yes, to sleep. And they don't lay good eggs. Um, but there's a difference between chicken and us, because the chickens <laughs> still have um, a light receptor in their pineal, which we don't have. But we kind of receive the light too, when you say it's important but to get so and so, and you, okay. We have to receive it through the eyes, and the, the chicken example is very good, because um, you mess up their lives by giving them so, sort of either constant light or not, the, or not enough light or the wrong light signals. And we do exactly the same thing, but not through the pineal, but through the eyes. What happens to us in winter, if I understand you well? As we get so much more light in summer, should we sleep less in summer and more in winter? We do. We do we sleep. Do? We sleep less in summer than we do in winter. Um, but of course, our winter is not really winter because we can, we can turn on the lights and thereby mimic as if we are still having a summer's day. Every time we show our biology that it's still light um, is, is, uh, is, this, is signifies not a winter day. And there's a lovely experiment that Tom Ware once did. He, he had people live their normal lives um, in, in uh, New York, or it was Washington, I don't care, Washington. And then he told them, it was an October experiment, then he told them, you can do this for two weeks, but the next two weeks, you have to go into your apartment after sunset and cannot leave it until sunrise. But the apartment was made dark. There was not one bit of light in the apartment. So they could lead their normal lives, but after sunset to sunrise, they had no light. And they slept much longer. They did not sleep in one consolidated bout. They slept for a couple of hours, and then they woke up. 
in the dark. In the dark. And we're sort of between two worlds, the really wake world and the sleep world. I always think that this is the time when it was still natural to do that, where all our fairy tales can come from. So this is in this state, in this state where you're not quite awake and we're not asleep. Um, and then they slept again. Are you encouraging us to, to divide our sleep because you said, oh, this big chunk of sleep, is that something you would say no to sleep less in the night and have a little nap, is that better? No, uh, what I would like to get across is that we, take our, we, we should take our sleep very seriously. There's nothing wrong with sleeping in, in, in one bout. It's very practical. But it should be the right bout for the right person. But we sh should take it seriously, and if you just try to sort of, yes, I have to sleep, otherwise I feel lousy, so I'll do it at a certain time, then you don't have an attitude towards your sleep, which means you don't have an attitude towards your wakefulness either, because you're going into, you're going into the risk that your wakeful wake time is just bad, and you don't notice it because, of course, you adapt to your badness. Um, but people who get enough sleep, they realize what they have done before. So the, the Tom Ware um, uh, subjects, they said anybody who has ever said that they slept enough have no clue what they're talking about after these weeks in, in, in those dark autumn nights. Um, we have lost completely our, the attitude and the connection to our sleep. And that's why most people have sleep problems. Because take, for example, an early person. The early person not knowing that there are... This is genetically, you said. This is genetic. Early person, late so you, person, genetic. So, well, it, it's not only early and late person. It's, it's like dwarves and giants. There's a lot of th people in between. Take an early person. I know many early people who come to me and say, I've got sleep problems. And I said, okay, tell me about your sleep problems. And they say, well, I regularly wake up in the middle of the night. And I say, okay, what's the middle of the night? Four o'clock. I wake up. I can't fall asleep again. So what they do is that they, they, they are under the pressure of the late population, and they think that they are boring if they go to bed how they should at eight. Because the internal, and there you were quite right, the internal alarm clock comes at four and says, I don't care when you went to bed. We are getting up now. <laughs> and that's So you really you can treat those people's sleep disorders oh, by, just, by sending Just them by awareness. They say to, them, them to, to their early, husbands and boyfriends, they say, my body clock wants me to go to sleep now, it has nothing to do with me being boring, and then they suddenly can sleep, they have no sleep problem. So a, an awareness about your individual sleep will probably help, I would say, 40 to 50% of the people who can't sleep well. I think this is a very nice closing remark. Thank you very much, I love sleeping, and you encouraged me to do even more so. Thank you very much, Tiff. Thank you.